A very good morning to all of you my dear students. Welcome to all of you to your alternative English class. In the previous class we have read section 1 of the chapter the rainbow bard. So today we are going to discuss section 2 of the same chapter the rainbow bard. But before starting chapter section 2 let us discuss few points from section 1. In section 1 you got to know that there is a small girl named Maggie and she has a brother named Don. And what was Maggie doing? Initially there was the picture of, his, of her classroom and the teacher was teaching but Maggie was completely absent minded throughout the class because in her brain there was the vision of the girl sorry vision of the bird. She was thinking of the bird whom she was calling the rainbow bird because its body was heavy, beautiful color and beautiful pattern. And then it is mentioned how did she get it. One day when she and her brother Dawn had been there near the sea in order to search for mushroom, they realized something flapping beneath their feet. They noticed that a small beautiful bird flew away from the place and sat on the sea of tree and it was an everlasting beauty on the part of Maggie and she liked the bird a lot. In the meantime when the school was over Maggie didn't wish that her friends should follow her because she doesn't want that her discovery should be exposed. So she started running very fast to avoid the company of her classmates and finally they reached the place and Maggie was looking at the bird with eyes filled with love. Okay, this was the theme of your unit 1. Now let us discuss section 2 of the chapter. They hurried across the road, past the spindle lake house with no fence around it, past the red roofed cottage where there were bathing suits hung out to dry and it is mentioned that day is over. This is the scene of another day. This day they are running, they are crushing the house which was having lots of rod the red roofed cottage where bathing suit was hanging in order to dry it out in the sunlight and they were crushing this thing means the complete scenario the complete scene the surrounding is being explained here surely this afternoon the little birds would be out in front of the nest and maggie is thinking that definitely today this afternoon the birds must be out of their nest. The day before when they had rain with their ears close to the ground, they would heard something thin but distinct, a chipping and twittering. And what is mentioned, Maggie is thinking that there were a number of other birds because the previous day they just heard on the ground like this and they noticed that something some buzzing sound of the birds was coming out of the hole. It had come to them through the warm earth, thrilling them with intense life and they get to know about it from the warm earth and it felt some thrilling feelings, some thrilling experience of life. Those bits of living color down there in the dark how wonderful it would be when they come out into, into the light. And what is Maggie thinking? Maggie is thinking that there is color, there is beauty and all these things are inside the earth. Now think when they will come out in the sunlight, how it will look like. Understood the point? Here Maggie is focusing on the beauty of the rainbow bird. Maggie pulled up suddenly in the final run, clutching at Don's arm. Suddenly Maggie was running, Don was also running. Maggie holds the arm of Don like this and 
stopped him and she also stopped. Wait, someone there. Don't go on it. And Maggie is speaking, stop. Someone is standing there. Don't go there. Breathing hard, Don was feeling restless because he was running. He was taking heavy breath. Don stood staring at the big dark figure on the slope overlooking the sea and Don noticed that a dark and a big figure was standing there and it was looking towards the sea. It's Peter Relay watching if the mullet are coming, mullet type of sea fish. Then he is speaking that it's Peter Relay and he is waiting for the sea fish to come so that he can catch it. No, no, it isn't. It's Kafti. I know his hat. Then Maggie is speaking. No, no, it's not. He, it's Kafti. I know his hat. Yes, Kafti, the honey man. Then again Don is speaking. Yes, yes, Kafti, the honey man. The man was standing almost on the nest, looking down into the sea yolk by the beach. His body still as a wooden stump. And what was the man doing? The man was just standing. Just he was looking towards the sea oak tree. And his body was still. Constantly he was standing without any movement of the body. Just like wooden stump. Just like wooden stump. His, here the body of the cavity honey man is being compared to the wooden stump. Okay. His eyes intent at their own. As their own he moved slightly to the right. They saw. He had a gun at his side and suddenly the man was standing like this. He turned and when he turned, Maggie and Dawn were able to see that the man is also holding a gun. Horror laid an icy hand on the girl's heart. And now Maggie was feeling restless. There was horror, there was fear in her heart. She felt as if she will collapse there on the spot. What was he doing with a gun there? And then she is putting a question. What is the man doing with the gun there? Suddenly she started to run. Then Maggie was restless. She was unable to control her feelings. She started running very fast. Come on, I believe he's found the nest, I believe. And while speaking, she's, while running, she's speaking. Come on, Don, come on. I think she, he has got the nest. Her slim legs twinkle like beams of light over the turf. Turf means the grassland. Her pink frock blew up over her heated face. Now she started running and her legs were moving just like lightning. And her face was, means her, fa her frock was blowing up and it was covered her face. But still she was running and Don found it hard to keep up with her keep up means continue match and on the part of Don it was quite difficult to have a pace with Maggie because Maggie was running very fast because fear has captured his because fear has captured her heart he was too occupied to notice her sorry she was out of breath when she reached cavity. I skipped a line. She was out of breath when she reached cavity and her eyes had points of fire. And Maggie was restless. She was feeling breathless when she reached cavity and her eyes were glowing. It was the point of fire. He was too occupied to notice her. He was shifting the gun in his hands and watching the sea oak tree. But Cafeti didn't notice Maggie. He was busy in his own thought and he just picked up his gun and started shooting, started pointing to the sea oak tree. She saw a lump in the pocket of his shirt, a strain of blood. Then Maggie noticed that Cafeti is holding a lump, something, a lump in the pocket. And there was stains of blood, means patches of blood. Blood mark was there on his pocket. And Maggie felt terribly afraid of all these things. Words came thickly from her throat. What are you doing with that gun? Then Maggie started speaking. What are you doing with the gun? 
because there was fear in the heart of Maggie. Ah, he said, hardly looking round, you, you have been shooting something, what's that in your pocket? And when Maggie, suppose Maggie is asking, I'm Maggie, what are you holding in your pocket? Then Captain is speaking, ah, means irritatingly he spoke, ah, then again Maggie is asking, you have been shooting something, what's that in your pocket? Cafeteria let his eyes rest on her solidly, a glow green parting his lips. Guess. Then Cafeteria just looked at Maggie and told her, guess. It's not, it's a bird. And then he's, he's speaking, it's not, it's a bird. Right, right, first shot. Maggie is speaking, it's a bird. Then Cafeteria is speaking, right, first shot. Most people would have thought it was a rabbit. You will see one of those colored bee eaters. Little girl, now the cafeteria is disclosing something, disclosing a secret. Not secret, it was not known to Maggie. And cafeteria is speaking, have you seen the bee eaters? Who are the bee eaters here? The rainbow birds are the bee eaters here. Her maid somewhere about, I will get him too before long. And then Cavity is speaking that I have killed, I killed the rainbow bird, not rainbow bird, the bee eater. And I know its mate is also its mate, means his, her companion is also present there. He took the crumpled bird from his pocket and danced it before her proudly. Then the bird was like this in his pocket. Short pocket, okay? So he just took the bird and danced it, means hang it in front of Maggie. And through a blur, she saw the ruffled bronze and emerald of its plumage. Plumage means natural feather covering, and Maggie is able to see the various pattern, various color of the rainbow bird. The film over its eyes, the drop of blood oozing from its beak. Then she threw herself on the turf and blood was coming down from the beak of the rainbow bird. Maggie just threw herself on the turf. She fell down on the grass and started crying. Beast, that's what you are, a beast. Then Maggie calling the cafeteria, beast, monster, you are a beast, you are a beast. Cafeteria looked from her small, sobbing figure to that of the boy. Cafeteria was looking at Maggie, but when Maggie started crying like this, he just looked at Dawn. A syphilis and built it in his eyes and he was feeling embarrassed and he was puzzled what had happened. He was a hulking, slow-witted fellow who lived in a humpy on the other side of the creek and that cafeteria was a slow-witted fellow, means slowed brain, and he was a fat man, and he was living in a crude hut, means in a small hut he was living, and he was also puzzled that what it happened, why Maggie was crying like this, that's why he was looking at Dawn with the hope, with the expectation that Dawn would be able to answer it. Surrounded by his hives and a thick growth of tea tree. And what were the things present around the house of the cafeti? There were bee hives and tea tree plants. What's the trouble? He asked. That bird is it? Then he asked, What's the trouble? Why the girl is crying like this? Is she crying for this bird only? Don had no reply. He was confused half ashamed of his sister. Okay, now Don didn't answer anything because first of all he was confused, second thing was he was feeling ashamed of the behavior of his sister who was crying just like a small baby, just like a toddler for a bird. Lord, you don't want to worry about vomit like that. Vomit, vomit means what? Something which is very harmful and here the cafeteria is speaking vomit to the rainbow bar, to the bee eater. Listen, for Maggie it is rainbow bar, but for cafeteria it is the bee eater, okay? Death on bees, 
them things are hanging around the hives and leaking them up as they come out and then the cafeteria is speaking that this bee eater is moving around the hives of bee and killing eating up the bees when they are coming out and they are not satisfied with robbing you like that the little devils they will go through a flying swarm and take out the queen its effect dilkum dinku then cafeteria is speaking that you people should not cry like this and they are they are going in a group in a swarm and they will bring the queen the honey bee okay the queen honey bee so you should not i promise i swear in kun means a promise okay a promise you should not cry like this i would like to wipe a lot of them of the face of the earth and i have decided that i will kill all the rainbow birds from the earth who is speaking the honey man is speaking he went over to the tiny opening of the tunnel and drew his the soft earth down over the face of it with his heavy boot and then he went near the tiny opening of the tunnel then just removed some of the sand by his boot there was a dull passion in his absorbed eyes a sense of warring against a wheel and there was dull passion there was passion in the eyes of cafeti and he was giving warning against the evil it means he is going to do the good thing he is going to kill the bee eaters he is going to clear them all out of this universe no you don't want to trouble about the about the likes of them unless it's to go after them with your sanghai the six pence a head waiting for any of you fetch me then the cafeti it's keeping a condition before dawn speaking that no it's not difficult to catch them you have to use sanghai sanghai is a type of medicine that can be used to senseless something senseless a bird or animal and if you are going to bring one bird for me i will give you six pence who is speaking the cafeti the honey man is speaking tell the other youngsters that is tanner ahead i'm going to clear lot of them out this winter and just you just go and speak to the youngsters that i'm going to kill a lot of them this winter but if you are able to bring one bee eater that bird i will give you six pence per bird soldering his gun he moved off down the beach a lumbering heaviness in his gait gait means walking style okay and he just hold his gun and started walking from the place Make you are still stretched prone on the turf, her face in her arms, and done. Watch her a while, awkward and ill at ease. But the superiority of one who has not given himself away was slowly asserting itself. Still, Maggie was laying on the grass and crying. But Don was not feeling all these things. He was feeling little bit superior. Picking up the dead bird. that cafeti had thrown on the grass he fingered it clumsily wondering if there were any bees in its scrub crop means throat okay then the bird which was being thrown by the cafeti don just take it john don just took it in his hand and started searching either some bees are there on the beak of the bird or not it was still warm but its plumes were ruffled with streaky and it didn't look nearly so beautiful so wonderful as when it had shot into the air then don is thinking that the bird was looking very beautiful when it was flying in the sky but right now it is not at all looking beautiful death and bees the honeyman had said he began to feel a contempt for it now he is recalling the words of the honeyman death and bees because of the birds the bees are dying now don felt contempt for it come on mag his gun now and the other kids will be coming along soon she rose from the grass tossing back her hair and looking at the bird with radiant eyes then don is calling to his sister mag come on the person has left the place now let's go otherwise other girls also will come here now maggie rose from the grass and he just took her 
back her hair and looking at the bird he just she just looked at the bird with reddened eyes her eyes were looking red because she was crying chuck it away throw it away who said maggie said why i'm going to take it home and skin it chuck it away it's a storm then again maggie speaking just throw it away but don't didn't listen when finally when maggie said it don listened her <coughs> he has stated a moment and then obeyed her they trail over the grass towards the so store don swinging his bag and whistling to so he did not care then maggie was going home don was just moving like this and swinging his bag and whistling as if he doesn't bother about these things there must be a lot of rainbow birds about and if the honeyman kept his promise six pence a head then what is running in the brain of don don is thinking there must be lots of honey bird means this rainbow bird if the honeyman is keeping his promise it means per bird i will get six pence he could go out with the other boys on saturday morning looking all along the sandy bank but he would not use a sangai no fear his new bowered beard was three times as good and then he is speaking that i will not use sangai i will not use any medicine but my beard was quite good to catch the rainbow bird understood it it means finally don did decide that he will he will go along with his classmates along with his followers in order to catch the rainbow bird so that he can get six pence per bird from the honeyman okay understood it so what is the summary of this section it's all about the killing of the rainbow bird and the reaction of maggie and how don was happy because the honeyman had told him that he will give six pence per bird if they are killing a bird okay thank you any doubt you have just ask me but before it read the complete section any difficult word meanings you are unable to find out just give me a call okay thank you once again have a nice time